fucking banging without a condom and it's all good. Yeah, but sometimes fucking I like the condom because I like to slap them in the face. Oh, what the shit, the fucking van. Hey, I know these fucking dudes. You know what? Why don't we go check them out? Ooh, shoot Come a on. Champ. Right now we're at the XFC Training Center. It's uh, home of the Grapplers Domain Fighters. Um, they also own the XFC Fight Championship, a fight organization, cage fighting here in Austin, Texas. Um, they've spanned out to a little bit of Arkansas, Oklahoma, and uh, Louisiana. They've also had fights out there. It's unique in Central Texas. Um, if somebody's looking in to get into a fight, uh, into the fight game, a lot of young people want to you hear that? He's not picking a fight with no one out there. Not picking a fight with anybody. <laughs> they, um, they think they can just jump into it. But if you get into a good school, a good reputable school with, that's attached and has, has bands and large fight organizations, they're not going to put their name on you unless you're ready. So you come, they'll make sure that they train you right. They'll make sure that you get your amateur fights because you can't prove yourself by going pro right off the bat. You gotta take amateur fights and show that you can listen to your coach, show that you can execute techniques when you're under pressure. Somebody can fight. Let's say they show up, they're out of shape, they got love handles like me, <laughs> right? And, yeah, get a good shot of those stretch marks, Spiritus <laughs> veins. Say they show up, let's say, like, what's, there's somebody out there watching, they're just like, man, I wanna do that. I'm like, that's totally for me, but I'm not in shape, like, how do I get like how how long is like from point A to like point B? Point A <laughs> to point B. No, I mean like before you're prepared for your first fight or amateur fight, um, I would say, right? I would say it depends on their instincts and it depends on their experience. If they have any kind of prior experience, even though they're out of shape, that's gonna make a big difference. Uh, but let's say they've got decent instincts and they are out of shape, I would say at least a year. Tell us a little bit about your diet right now, like as far as training and everything. How, how, how important is diet to training? Diet is very important, especially when you're working up to a fight. A lot of people have, fighters have specific needs to reach whatever weight they're trying to be at. Myself, I have trouble keeping the weight on, so I have to eat a lot and I have to walk around probably 15 pounds uh, above my fight weight and then uh, the diet changes again when it comes time to uh, cut that fight. Um, right now, I, I do something called food combining. I separate my carbs and my proteins. Uh, it raises your metabolism. It uh, makes your digestive, digestive system a lot quicker, and you'll actually cut. You'll actually cut weight. You drink a lot of water, you'll cut water weight. You know, if uh, your body says you're getting enough food, you're getting enough water, you're not going to have to retain any of that excess. Plus. You're uh, stimulating all your muscles, you're lifting the weights, you're activating all those all those uh, strength fibers, and you're training really hard, so you're activating and utilizing all your endurance fibers. So your your body just becomes a, a real well oil machine. machine. Yeah. Awesome. Very different once you're there to the, there to compete. You know, it, uh, you know everybody wants to be uh, uh, respectful of each other. Like you said, man, everybody's cool, but you know once you get in there. Like you said, man, you're, that's it, dude. I mean, it, hey, we're, we're humans, man. It's nature, you know. Uh, you go one-on-one -on -one with somebody, that's the way it's going to go down. So. so you want to explain these, like, kids and stuff, yeah, it's not about whooping ass, it's about controlling your anger and having control of the fight. Right, right, you yeah. So much that There's a lot of technique and positioning involved and a lot of different things like that. It's not just going out there and beating somebody up on the mat. Well, how's that involved in, like, like the last 10 years? Because, like, if you watch those, like, earlier mixed martial arts and pay-per-views, like the old UFCs, and like now everybody's like, you know, Kempo Karate and everybody's like high on the technique and you know a lot of moves when before it was just a bunch of big sweaty dudes like Tank Abbott just punching and yeah. Well you, like, you had a lot of guys that came out of college wrestling that, you know, had a lot of dominant position on the ground. Uh, like Mark Coleman and uh, guys like that, they come out and they just dominate people. But you know, as as they started uh, taking the different karate's, jujitsu, taekwondo and uh, judo, different things like that started integrating that in you know it's not just one one aspect of the game that's gonna 
that's gonna win, you gotta learn everything. You know, you gotta get everything. Your food groups are like your Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, boxing, and wrestling. You gotta have positioning, submissions, and defense on the ground. You gotta have uh, um, you gotta have some kind of stand up game with your hands. And if you are one dimensional, just hands and no feet, then that takes a lot of uh, a lot of mind games out of your whole plan. So you gotta have something for each distance. If you're far away, you need kicks, punches, elbows. Then you need wrestling when you're in the clinch when you're holding on wrestling and dirty boxing and then when you go to the ground that's wrestling too your takedowns so then you need your positioning and submission and striking on the ground Stay tuned for future fights. Adam, eat a dick. <laughs>